they've got some players on some signature heroes. That's always a good sign. You know, the KT Naga, Armel playing mid TA. It does seem like the direction they went overall was like, let's just get some players on their signature heroes and make a draft around that. Screw meta, you know, screw optimal yeah. lineup. Just get comfortable. And there's some good synergy too. Like they got the Naga Disruptor combo. Their team fight does look very what potent. Is so. this? I like to think TNC, if there's anyone who knows how to make this offlane Naga work, it's going to be KP on the TNC side, because this is a hero that, as far as we've seen get played, it's almost exclusively as a one position, um, or maybe you run it mid, but you're always going to get a lot of farm on Naga, whereas this game with CKT on your team, I don't think we can see KP play that greedy. Will there be enough space for this Tricor? We'll find out as the Bounty Rune spawn, Alliance going for the double bottom, and TNC grabbing the double top. So, looks like they will be sticking with the tri lane Sand King initially. The Alliance love their tri lane. Okay, there we go. Will not be the case yet. Yes. Hanskin with the Blightstone. That's not your everyday starting item, but perhaps the this is the four position Lena build. Is that minus armor going to give some extra right click damage in this lane with his harass? Counter to the the seemingly uh, you know infinite sustained CK maybe. Just try to out harass him with that minus armor. Yeah, because, yeah, Sand King and CK theoretically will be trading right clicks quite a bit. And Lena outranges, well, two melee heroes in lane. So this Lightstone potentially has some value. It is a 300 gold investment, though, so we'll see how it works. And Hanskin with a lot of early harass. We're going to see Tim's make a quick move yes. on mid here as well, trying to help secure Armel's lane. Where you'd normally expect to see a Disruptor. Early on, I guess he was sitting mid looking for a courier snipe. He does have boots, so he was probably hoping to get a courier. And then once he realized it wasn't going to happen, he just went for some harass. Heads back to top now. He's going to join KP, who is sitting one and two. Had a bit of a rough start, but creeps are pushing in, and Tim's will arrive. Yep. See if he can stabilize that lane. Yeah. See how the Naga does. I think the key to playing against Night Stalker is just having stuns or lockdown, and the Naga and Snare does provide that uh, for at least. CK has long duration stun potentially yeah. as well. So that was the solution we saw Alliance put into play yesterday against Fnatic was picking like the Ogre, picking these tanky heroes that have stuns or control. And I think Naga can fit, uh, maybe not so much in the tanky category, but the Ensnare is a very useful tool and. Overall, they just have a lot of ways to potentially punish tower dives. The glimpse also, if he yep. jumps in, doesn't kill the disruptor. You glimpse him back as he tries to retreat. Uh, so I would expect to see Nico Baby play a more conservative Night Stalker game this time around. Well, the dreaded two-minute DD rune for the mid lane. Limp. Be very ha happy to have found that one. Armel's been doing decently here so far. Does have the refraction to deal with some of that damage. Good news for Amel is he He's has a health advantage. Get the, get the cleave here on Limp. Yeah. Gotta be careful. So Limp can't play as aggressive as he'd like with the DD room because of how low he was. He has to salve up first. And so. now there's a fresh refraction. Yep. So Armel can tank through this damage. Ooh, nice grip storm to get that range creep. And well, so much for that. Gets off the spirit scythe and Limp is going to go for it. Armel has to quickly pop fairy fire yeah. and use another refraction Just to stay alive. Up, yeah. Has the salve. What's the end of Limp's mana. He has a mango, but it's a very heavy harass trade and regen battle happening in this mid lane so far. Mango popped, and uh, as you mentioned, the trading continues. How's Arlena doing down bottom? Just contesting the pull, it looks like. CK now starting to bully the Sand King quite a bit. Gabby, nice crit there. Seems like they have not been able to harass the CK too much. The second point in Chaos Strike, you're getting an extra 15% lifesteal from it, so his sustain in this lane is very hard to deal with. And with the salve still there, magic stick, he's going to win the, the regen battle in his lane. If you want to try and win this lane, you have to go like all in for a kill, for example, but he's just too tanky for that. Tim's makes his move in. Has the one point glimpse. But there is a dire observer ward here. It is, of course, daytime, so yep. he won't actually find an opening feeling like he could maybe swing the lane in Armel's favor, even just with a one nuke or something, but I feel like this mid lane is heavily going either way just yet. Both players just being forced to use a lot of regen, live with a, a small edge. The yeah. DD room meant he f he's forced out more regen from Armel than he's had to use himself. 
the good news for TNC is they've got a lot of heroes that can enjoy stacks, and those have been getting farmed uh, or stacked up by the Disruptor as TNC find their first blood yep. bottom. With the Sentry Ward Very sanking, nice. couldn't stay in this. And Skin is doing good work here on March, who is going to stand his ground and just die. It's one of those ones, like, am I in any pub? Is this is, is somebody just going down mid? But uh, no, very, very tactical for March. He knows he can't offer anything in lane with no mana, no health. And the best thing he can do is just die as fast as possible and TP back in and bring Gabby his items. Why are you flaming NA pubs, guys? They are a pinnacle of Dota excellence. A lot of great players that come out of NA. But and particularly NA pubs. <laughs> Yeah. That's why we they, always have a new in-house league, because the pubs are uh, so great. If you can survive NA pubs, you can. that's when you know you can make it, LD. That's what that tells me. I just want to say there's uh, three NA teams in the upper bracket here. Yeah, they've had to MDL for all the MDL <laughs> uh, For all the haters on the number of slots awarded. Uh -huh. Mid lane, Armel taking some damage here. He's a little short of the mana for a refraction, and so he will good. pay the ultimate price as Limp gets the kill. Gabby, meanwhile, in the bottom lane. Gets that critical chaos strike to keep himself alive, but Hanskin laying in the damage. Salve will come out. He's Limp. a tango as well. Limp is crushing mid right now. It's that DD rune, you think, the main reason? Or? One of the reasons. 33. Taking some heavy damage here. Gabby, though, being forced back to support Lena. Nice clip. Already too, level four wave. and just punishing. Yeah, Gabby just salved up, and he's still very low in health, so. They did a good job pressing him under the tower. Well, Armel is back to his stacks, which have been very uh, con disciplined stacking by Tim's. Try to give this TA a path back into the game. He'll take the mid lane as well. Grab some levels, because he has been roaming a lot. Manuel, well, top lane though, KP. Looks like he should be going down, unless he's got some crazy jukes. He does not. Nico Baby grabbing the kill. Halfway now to his point booster. Just phase boots, Night Stalker thinks. Has the axe queued up. This is all you need is just phase boots, magic stick. Sometimes you get like a ring of bassy in there, but doesn't need it, he says, for this lane. Limp's throwing his first exorcism with the siege creep. He's just trying to get as much damage as possible under this tier one tower. We're not going to likely see him claim it. Limp running uh, forward. Coming right oh, into yeah. the middle of uh, Armel and Tim's. They do have a glimpse. They're going to reel him back. But uh, the trap deployed. Limp, he's overextended. Is he going to go down? One more auto attack does the trick. A much needed kill for Armel and a cocky play by Limp. Yeah, just a bit too aggressive there. I think he, he knows how much of an advantage he'd built, built up. So he just felt a bit too confident as a result. And good punish from TNC. Limp now the TA, die. now the TA ahead of him, and exorcism yeah. blown. And considering he survived 65 minutes without dying last game, it was uh, not what you'd expect out of this man. He's plays very conservative Dota a lot of the time. They're gonna send Fada over to mid for the time being. Another Burrow strike through on Gabby. Has clipped level six. Has the stick charges, but taking quite a bit of harass. With this double stun lane, it's very dangerous to try and just regen your way back into it. Stand near the creeps, and you might eat either of the stuns. So he's got to be careful. Pops the stick, but still only half HP. KP playing behind the tower, able to just pretty much free farm there. He doesn't want to really risk his life and play near the Night Stalker. Has a skill point saved up, so if he needs to level up Song to save his life, he may choose to do so. Looks like they're gonna rotate Hanskin around. Keeps the pressure on March. And Armel keeps on farming these Ancients, not being contested by Alliance. This getting a lot of stacks in the jungle and a lot starting of to pull ahead in the net worth department, almost up there with the Night Stalker. Yeah, he's suddenly well ahead of Limp. And yeah, Limp dying is part of that, but it, most of it is just the fact he fell back to the jungle when he had a triple stack at his big camp. He stacks his Ancients. He's just able to flash farm much faster than Limp is. Armel working on Limp here. They do have a Glimpse available. It's only level one. Even a Thunderstrike might do it. Just gets in range with the Kinetic Field follow-up. Limp should be dropping. Maybe not with the Ice Path rotation from Fada. It's Armel on the back foot. He has Refraction. Will be using it. Fada now, an aggressive strut up onto the high ground. Will he pay? Into the Roche Pit. Trying to fog out Tim's, who now runs into the Ice Path. 
It's Tim's turn to maybe be in too far, but that last auto attack secures the kill. Gets the XP, which he definitely needed. Hits level five. So a uh, delicate dance. And both supports drop. I'm a good understand. He, he waits as long as possible before popping Refract. He had the damage over time from the Jakira on him, so doesn't panic and spam the Refract. Just waits until it pretty much wears off and he's very low in health, but gets Refract off. Able to help his Disruptor turn around, get a kill. So, how do you how do you feel about the way the lanes have gone overall, gods, with TNC having this tricor? Um, they've gone slightly alliance favored, I think, even though TA kind of recovered the mid lane and pulled ahead, just because Night Stalker is free farming, and Gabby has seen a decent amount of pressure on him. Well, Tombstone does get dropped here. They're gonna catch out Hanskin. Two for two on the bounty runes, but it might be a two for nil on the hero kills. Thirty three chasing in onto March has limp there in reserve. He goes in with the epicenter. Do they have detection for him? They drop the sentry ward, pull him back in. Gets back to the shrine, gets up the decay, and gets the kill at Lips to tell the tale. A double for March. Oh, that was a big swing. Yeah, nice preemptive plays from TNC there, making sure they had the numbers, they had the heroes to contest and defend these bounty runes. Even though they don't get a bounty rune trade that's favorable to them, they get the hero kills. All the while, KP is just cutting this wave top. He's brought the tower down almost to half with the help of the creeps. He's playing kind of just like a carry Naga right now. I'll be curious to see where he goes item-wise. Uh, you know, Diffusal Manta is your typical Naga items, but when you're playing with CKTA, you'd maybe expect more of a utility build. Well, CK going for the Echo Saber, at least for now. Gabby has it queued up, so not Heart Rush like we've mm -hmm. often seen. Occasionally we see a Midas. So it looks like they want Gabby to be the tempo controller, the fighter in the mid game. Uh, and give that Naga a little more space. Yeah, I, I like the idea that you can't go ultra greedy or try and farm like super big items on this TNC side when you do have three greedy cores. You need to get, you need at least some of your cores to be as ready as possible to fight early on. They're trying to set bottom with a song here. Disruptor is there with a static storm follow up. KP hasn't shown himself, and they are baiting Gabby, but Alliance seem to have an idea that this is a bait. They've sniffed it out. They're actually going to scan, smoke, and rotate, but they are burning a lot here. Yeah. Could be walking into a trap as TNC move out, march out in front. Hanskin swinging around from the west and the sawning initiation. They've isolated the Death Prophet. Can they burst her in time? Static Storm committed, and she is completely caught out. Easy takedown. Hanskin just backed off instantly. That could have been a lot worse for Alliance considering 33 was just in the neighborhood looking to take that fight. And the rest of Alliance, Hanskin and Fada, the two supports, were also smoked up heading bottom. Do they, they might try to fight now, yeah. knowing the song's on cooldown. That's the big combo. And if you're TNC, you're like, let's not engage, let's not take a fight, because they were hoping to catch two, three, four heroes in that Song of the Siren Static Storm combo, only got the one. It's a very big kill. It's probably, it's the tempo here. It's the Death Prophet. Exorcism is what Alliance are looking to push around. So it's, in but some ways, the most important kill you can get. But at the same time, you have to respect those long They're on the move, and they're going to find KP here. Gets up the net, pulls in that Lina. Two seconds stun. She's almost dead already. The armlet decapitation from the CK. And now he's going to pop his oh, ultimate. Get to work, but disjoints and gets back to safety. Nico Baby rushing in now, wants to engage, wants to get active, has to respect that CK stun, though. He could die quickly to these illusions if he's not careful, Gabby. Lobbing like he wants to go. Here comes the epicenter. They're diving the tower with the veil and the sandstorm. The AOE damage immense, but Gabby's staying alive for now. Only for now. They've lost four. It's a clean sweep for Alliance and a tier one to boot. Yeah, I love it. Nico Baby teeping in. So many of these carry Night Soulkers you see just stay in their safe lane until they finish Ag Scepter. Alliance understand that with Song and Static Storm down, they are just way stronger at, than TNC. So Nico Baby's like, sure, I'll TP into this fight. Comes with the Dark Ascension and helps clean up the, the fight. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Armel did take the tier one. He's got his blink complete already on his way to a Desolator. So he is farming well. Gabby working towards the Echo Saber. And it looks like Naga is going to be building a pipe. Yeah. Or at least a, a hood initially. So much magic damage on this dire side. I, I feel like it's too greedy to go like carry items on full three of these cores. Top lane, Tim's, he's in pretty far, drops the Static Storm, gets off the Kinetic Field, but it doesn't cover the whole 
kinetic field. And 33 can chase. They've got Dust waiting. He jumps out with the Burrow Strike. Blink forward from TA. Keeps the vision going. Can they get that follow-up stun reality rift combination to lock him down? They get the Thunder Strike. They get the crit. They get the kill. Nicely played. And now they can transition into a tower push. That should be the death of this tower. And with it, almost a Desolator complete. As KP is being hounded bottom, he has his song. He may need to use it just to save his own life. No, Alliance don't want to chase. It is daytime. And 15-minute bounty runes are on the menu now. With these tier ones down, we may just see a tier two for two trade. If TNC want, they may try rotate and TP bottom. With Nag already there, they can set up to contest bottom. They pretty much have free bounty rune top. But Bounty Rune's top, so it's up to them whether they decide to fight down here. Naga they, is there with Illusions. They don't have Static Storm or Phantasm yeah. at the moment, so it'd be a Probably risky not. fight. I think Naga KP could saw denying. grab a bounty, and then just get out. Is it worth it? <laughs> Probably not. He'll just back away. Yeah. He, looks, he was trying to deny one with a uh, Illusion, but a line's already there. But uh, yeah, he's got the pipe queued up now, so not just the hood. It looks like a full pipe, and He's going to be that utility Naga. I may even see items like, you know, a Blink Dagger so we can just Song Blink in, catch as many heroes as possible. Could see him going to the Vlads. They have enough physical damage coming out of TACK that him itemizing to, like, Diffusal Manta would just not really work for their lineup. Handskin, I believe uh, this ward was scouted. Radiant Ping came out. Just the scene it getting placed. So what's next as far as these teams go, gods? We've got the Nico Baby Ags online. Exorcism is up. Yule's almost complete on that DP. We just got to see more farming, or is there a move on the horizon for one of oh. these teams? You know, Alliance, they're ready to go. The Ags being complete on Night Stalker. This is go time. Perhaps they want Limp's Yule Scepter, but with level 2 Exorcism and Night Stalker Ags, and it's night time for four more minutes... Alliance aren't looking to sit back and play too passively. They do have to be careful, though. The burst of the TA with Deso and the CK, they will blow up Lyft very quickly here. But Alliance have so many AoE stuns, something that I know uh, Fog mentioned, like the LSA, the Barrow Strike, the Jakira Ice Path. This, these are the kind of spells you hate playing into as a CK. They just destroy your damage output when your illusions and your hero are just being stunned up. Uh, Tim's he was waiting for a long time to get that Observer. Finally grabs it. But Hanskin on the chase, Nico Baby as well, and Tim's will pay. It looks even going to commit the Dark Ascension to secure this one. Gets the Crippling Fear off, isolates the Disruptor, secures the kill. <laughs> but award, you know, end of Dark Ascension committed. Yeah, so that's... I think you'll take that if you're Disruptor. I think so too. Dark Ascension, even though it's still going to be nighttime, the Dark Ascension is such a power boost, so... You remove that, and that kind of means you're not as afraid of Alliance at this stage of the game. Ultimately, Alliance can't really overcommit right now because of that teamfight wombo combo. The Naga plus Disruptor and the physical damage of TNC is something to be worried about. TNC, despite oh, being night, they're going Roche. They know Dark Ascension's yeah. down, but it is nighttime, and it is scary. I like this if KP can get there. He's the Song of the Siren that can kind of make this team fight work. Dire Observer Ward comes out. They've seen March wandering around. They have to know something's yeah. up. KPTP's in. So they've got Song Static Storm combo and a line. though, getting slowed down. This Roche is dropping quickly, lays in the Macro Pyre. They're going to come in for this. KP sitting there on the side of the fight. He gets silenced, but it doesn't matter. Age is secured and also denied. Oh. And now the Song, they're looking for more. Here comes the Disruptor. Static Storm, Kinetic Field combo. The Epicenter's too late. They're going to isolate the. One blow up Nico baby dominating streak ended, but now they fight into Fada. He gets one kill. Aegis now down, and DP ult still going. Has to be careful though. There's the Lena stun. Laguna blade onto the TA. They're gonna get Armel twice. They kill him off through the Aegis. They lose the CK. Alliance still fighting strong, salvaging this fight. Now turning back for KP on the Naga. He looks to retreat out of here but it's going to be a tough retreat with Hanskin every inch of the way, stunning and nuking him down. So they end up getting four, and all four go to limp. Wow. So much for that rough start in the mid lane. Yeah, the I mean, TNC execute the team fight how you'd expect. They get the song. They catch two, which is, you know, the, the amount you can kind of expect out of a Naga disruptor combo. You're not realistically going to get more than two unless Alliance are really out of position, but limp just goes ignored the entire fight. And... 
something mentioned, you know, the CK, he's just getting kind of kited around. He's unable to really blow up the Death Prophet like he'd like to. Limp has all that sustain from Spirit Siphons and... Had a heart queued up and uh, has had second thoughts. It is now BKB time, so Scabby. Yeah. It is a definitely a mandatory BKB game. So many stuns. Death Prophet Silence. Knights over Silence. Wonder if he should have gotten it before the Echo Saber. Like, with the way this game is developed. Obviously, easy to say in hindsight, yeah. but he is not going to be able to fight effectively in a larger scale engagement without the BKB. They got the Nico baby kill, though. He's been yep. slowed down, and TA is queen of net worth. Unfortunately, had to blow their Aegis right away in Alliance. They're smoked up. Looking Great to positioning punish by March. Yeah. He's ready to break this, and he will. Starts running away immediately. Had the Observer Ward as well. They're going to chase him onto the Shrine. Sand Cane Burrow Strength, but Armel just blinking out in time. They're going to commit for the Sundying. Throw in the Laguna Blade. They really want the kill as the Bounty Road spawn, but March is alive. He's just fine. It's Fada who's got a TP out. The Glimpse to cancel, and the Punish is there. They take down the Twin Head. Well, uh, ambitious play from Fada. Tried to run in and snipe that Bounty Rune. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, you're not picking it up on dying. I'll, I'll go for this, but really have to compliment March on his positioning there as a support. Anticipated that rotation, potential smoke. Yep. And of course, being undying, you have the luxury of actually living when they find you. Yes. It's a very tough place to fight into undying when you can just pop, put a tombstone on a cliff like that. It gives you such an edge in those scenarios. TA blink oh, out. No. <laughs> oh, Armel. At a six cents. And even BM in an all chat, but well deserved. Epicenter, not that long of a cooldown. He'll have it a minute and a half. Yeah. Not the end of the world. And TNC, they're looking just to farm these double BKBs. They're going to be pretty scary next team fight when both Chaos Knight and Templar Assassin have BKB. Here comes the smoke. TNC looking to make a move. They've got Gabby in tow along with Tim's. Just pushing in that middle wave, rotating to bottom. Maybe anticipating yeah. a move towards the Naga. I'm not sure what this move is about. It looks like March is just trying to get down some wards. Perhaps they're not really aggressively pushing out with the smoke. There's only three of them smoked up, and it's that's not a team fight. They that's like a let's get one pick off and run away as fast as possible kind of smoke. Yeah, the only other thing, maybe expecting Alliance to gank, but it is daytime. There is a dark ascension, I suppose. Tim's is very close to Ag Scepter on oh, Disruptor. That's such a fast Ag. Yeah, they, they need this too, because Nico Baby now has BKB. He's the frontliner, so he's typically going to get caught in the Song of the Siren, so if you can song him pre-BKB, and then you've got the Static Storm to drop on him, prevent him from popping his items, you're in a fantastic spot. Keeping up with Lena as Disruptor is... <laughs> Pretty insane, you know. He's only 600 gold down. Been involved yeah. in 10 he, kills. He maxed his Thunder Strike first. Uh, normally, you see maybe just two points in it because it like increases the damage quite a lot at level two. Uh, but he he just maxed it. Then he gets the talent, so he's yeah he's very happy. It lets you farm. Yep. And keep up. You just clear creep waves when you just drop it on a creep wave. So I think it suits this lineup also because they're not that gank focused. Yeah. They're more of a, you know, tricor. Let's farm for late game. Kind yeah. of draft. He's gotten so many levels that it hasn't really come at the cost of them losing kills because he hasn't had the levels in glimpse. So definitely working out. So TA already with a BKB far and ahead, leader in net worth. Not a hero night stalker can take. No. CK is not far behind too. He's just. 50 gold. He has his. Yeah, he has his BKB. So, double BKB on the TNC side. This is where they would love to have an Aegis. Unfortunately, having lost it, they're gonna have to wait like another three to five minutes to get a Roche fight or get themselves an Aegis. But they are damn scary right now. All their items coming up. Double BKB. Just 600 gold for Tim's until he has Ag. So they're gonna try give Tim's as much farm as possible, and then secure next Roche. And the good news is they're gonna hit all these item times, and it's Roche number two. So it actually gives them not just Aegis but cheese. So and CK definitely a good cheese carrier yes. with his very high HP pool. That is very true. So I I like how things look for TNC during this next three to five minutes. But if Alliance can kind of pick and choose their fights, make sure they don't let that Ag's disruptor catch them by surprise. 
You know, they just need to su survive their way through this little timing. And do you see Alliance if they just don't feed, eventually pulling ahead in the late game? Uh, I mean, Death Prophet, if she can just get tanky enough, needs a lot of armor this game, definitely possible. They just need to survive against this physical damage, which both Nico Baby and Limp are doing. Has an AC queued up, the other getting a Shivers Guard. Late game Dota, though, TA now has this level 25 meld hit bash, so even TA is a much scarier late game beast than she used to be, so no clear cut, I think, advantage. And that is a great talent to have versus Night Stalker, especially. Yeah. I do like the Alliance side just having all these AoE stuns when it goes late game. Like, CK is just not going to feel scary with Phantasm in these team fights. Double damage rune on this TA. They're going to try to force out the BKB, catch him out with the Ice Path. No follow up. Now, the engagement happening on the south side where they will catch out March. He drops Tombstone. They get the kill, they get the tomb as well. Disengage from TNC. Bounties are spawning, and they're going to look to contest bottom. Gabby's getting one. Maybe he thinks he can get two. Ooh. He'll be late to this, and he won't get it. Oh, can they force out the misses. BKB? They slow him down with the Spirit Siphon. They're going to chase him. A lot of slow stacking up here. He, if he BKBs, it might just be too late. He's going to pop his ultimate now. Goes to work on Fada. Gabby almost dead, and Nico Baby cleaning up. They got the silence on the Naga so that she couldn't song to save the day, and now they're chasing. Looking for Tim's. This is a Night Stalker's wet dream. Catch that Disruptor out, kill him off right quick. And just like that, Alliance sees the initiative, find their footing, and pull ahead. They just use their vision so well. They have three Observer Woods down bottom. They saw CK going alone for those bounty runes. Limp preemptively popping Exorcism to make sure they had the damage to kill him off. And what a great punish. TNC had all their heroes in the top lane. They would TP down to try and help, but it just came too late. So He really underestimated the damage, I feel like, holding the BKB that long. Yeah. He needed to just BKB stun and run, but he was already like 300 health before he did. He he would have lived if he did that, but he was just hoping to save his BKB, and the greed of Gabby ends up punishing him. Luckily, no Roshan for Alliance to claim while he was dead, and now Exorcism is on cooldown. So the upside of what just happened is you now have a, a one-minute window where you feel like you can achieve a lot if you're TNC. Unfortunately, it is going to be a long Roche respawn. With this dire vision, though, smoke might get scouted. I mean, they have, look at the Observer wow, wards that five they wards. have right now. It's insane. March dropping a ward is going to get a D ward here. Not in range of the OBS, though. TNC might think it's safe. And there's another Observer ward right by that, which has gone undetected. Yeah, yeah. So Alliance. Just hanging out. A little standoff in the middle lane. Sounding the bugle, but not sure they're moving in with the bugle. And that ward did not see this, did but not. it did see heroes ro roaming around in the area not too long ago. They're going to head up towards the high ground, move on to 33. Quick and jump forward from Armel. Massive damage being done. Chews up that scorpion. Secures the kill. And now they look for more. Fada in danger. Just a quick glimpse will do the trick. A stun follows in one way, then the other. And in the end, it connects for a kill. So now the way to Roche lying open. And Roche not, not up just Coming yet. back, yeah. <laughs> TNT's like, They're like, all right, come buddy, on. come on out. This is almost, I think this is more or less a max length respawn on Roche. Or at least within like five or ten seconds of the max. So will wait it out. They're really hoping. Armel's preemptively he's, melding. He's so got the like Orchid coming out, by the way. Ooh, nice. There's only the one BKB. There are two Yule Scepters, though. One on the DP, one on the Lina. Go Scepter on Jakiro. So there's not many obvious insta-kills that he can get from this. Just really the Sand King, and even Sand King might be able to, like, fast fingers blink away. But it's still a very good item. You want to have this, this Bloodthorn late game, typically, as TA. Alliance are not going to give this up. They're smoking. They've got Dark Ascension. They've got the BKB on the Night Stalker. No blink, though. He's gone for the AC first. KP with an Arcane. And into the pit, he marches. Armel is lurking. Roshan respawns. Right as Nico Baby comes in, takes a quick meld, then the blink away. March now isolated, but here's the song. Get ready oh. for Static Storm. Get ready for Kinetic Field. And that is an Aghanim's upgraded variety. Hand skin 
easily dealt with. Now Nico Baby trying to get to these backliners. He'll bring down the Disruptor, but it comes at a cost. A triple buyback. He's blown his BKB. Now he needs to get out. Disruptor doesn't have the buyback, so no glimpse to catch him. Tombstone just chilling in the pit. Roshan slaying zombies. Good news with the buybacks is they still have exorcism, so Alliance may feel confident they can go into the pit with Song and Static Storm on cooldown. And TA BKB and Phantasm yep. and CK BKB, so... Both teams pretty neutered. And with no BKBs, you generally would favor Alliance with all these stuns. But something they may not consider is KP did have an Arcane Rune, so his Song of the Siren will come up much earlier than Alliance might expect. Not this early, though. And they're trying to jump on him. him. Blink Burrow initiation. He's still got 30 seconds on that. Four step away. Has the pipe. He is a tough Naga to kill. And Alliance will have to back away. Static Storm also up in 20 seconds. It's not the longest of cooldowns. So both Song and Static Storm are back up in 15 seconds. Alliance cannot really fight once again, it feels like. Or if they are fighting, they need to be the ones getting the jump and blowing up one of those two heroes of that combo, either Naga or Disruptor. Oh, not again. They can't afford to be getting caught out here. Hanskin glimpsed on back. Armel with another assassination. Should be Roach, I feel. They have Naga in position with Song, and Alliance will scatter. Start pushing out other lanes, taking bounty runes or illusion runes on the south side. But the Roche will be claimed by TNC. Core Disruptor posing such a big threat on this game. They haven't solved Alliance yet in game two, but they're starting to pull ahead, and it feels like they may have come up with a better way to deal with the Night Stalker this time around. Yes. Feels like the Night Stalker, despite all his farm and items, he's had a great game, 7-1-3. and three. Just can't get into these fights. And Death Prophet, similar story. This he TA is just getting massive oh, now. It's spooky. Nullifier not far off. Armel will mow down that tier two. It's TNC taking the fight to Alliance. 18 to 17 the score. Only a 5k gold lead. Still either team's game. Yeah, this nullifier is going to ruin some of these saves on the Alliance side. Limp can't use his Yules defensively. Fada can't use his Ghost Scepter. Being able to purge these off makes such a big difference. Yeah, they're pretty item reliant. Oh yeah, and there's now two heroes that can remove items. Disruptor and AoE, Armel with a single target nullifier. So that is very smart play and itemization coming from TNC. They'll take over the dire jungle. They'll get some good wards down. And the vision that Alliance once had is significantly diminished. You see a very defensive ward back near their mid lane. They still have the two on the left side of the middle lane, but it doesn't seem like they're likely to use that vision anytime soon. So they are playing much more in the dark and much more defensively. KP with an Aghanim Scepter queued up. He has the gold for it after this creep wave, so... We could be looking at that AoE heal coming to play. And it is a lot of AoE damage on the Alliance side, so... It's like their answer to the Chen, you know? It's like, well, you have infinite heals, so do we. Yeah. That the plus the pipe, it's hard to win a fight. Yeah. I'd say at the same time, the song is typically being used to initiate when, you know, when you're starting a fight, you're often full health, so I'm not sure it's always going to have this crazy impact. If he's, like, late to a fight, yes. I imagine, or if someone gets caught. Battle for the Cliff Wards. Fada going in. And that's okay because TNC just wants the tier one for now. Still up at 33 minutes, but no longer. This four stop for KP. Proving to be basically a better blink dagger in some ways this game. He's able to maneuver around the same way he does a blink, but. Also there's the jump onto Fada. Ghost Scepter <laughs> instantly assassinated by Armel. He is dead. Orchid nullifier in a nutshell. You can't use spells, can't use items. You just die. And you die fast. Armel is angry. That game one did not go the way the TNC wanted, but here in game two with a CK now at almost 5,000 health, they are smashing this front door down in the bottom lane. Alliance backing off. They are gonna catch out Hanskin, Nullifier lobbed in again, cancels that, Yules, and here comes the buyback. They'll try to initiate. Great, Burrow Strike catches out three. Is this the fight for 33? Epicenter coming through. March and the TA blown up. Remember, she's got Aegis. 
They lock down KP on the Naga. The song is answered. He is dead. You can sing in the grave, lady. But now coming back for round two, Gabby with the BKB. Working with Armel, trying to bring down the Night Stalker. They slay him. They look for more. Static Storm was deployed, and they get another kill. Limp has fallen. Out for 100. That's a dieback. And this could be trouble for Fada. He can't stand against the CA. Nullifier winning the fights, maybe winning the game for TNC. Three heroes out. They threw so much at TNC, but the extra lives, the resets made yeah. the difference. It was a really good attempt from Alliance. They understood they had to... Night Stalker just gets on top of KP, stops him from using the song with the silence. But unfortunately, the Disruptor still managed to go for good ultimate. And then the two carries, the TA and the CK, they're just TA's got a far. DD. Yeah. This is probably two lanes. We oh, might just see Alliance nice. GG out. Yeah, this game's looking very difficult. There's the level 25 talent on TA as well. 33 will try to stall this with the Burrow Strike, but Armel's focused on buildings. Yep. No, oh. never mind that. <laughs> he, he was thinking about 33. That's a PKB down. Yeah, it's cost him very little, just a few seconds of double damage time. Melee completed in the middle lane. Melee completed oh, in the bottom yeah. lane. Head to top, Armel says. We've got 30 seconds. No death profit. Clear out the wave. Not sure if they'll stick around. Yeah, he will. Works on the catapult. And now over to the tier three tower. The team's still backing him up. One man siege army, nine, two, and eight. And remember, Armel gave up a solo kill at the start of this game to the DP, but the stacks by the disruptor, couple of key fights really brought him back. And now TNC are feeling it. They're gonna again focus the sand king. You burrow strike in, you get hit by the nullifier. You die, good sir. And now KP with the song. Gonna reset the fight, at least Nico Baby as the one man against the TNC army who BKB stand in the macro pyre. Everyone healed up, Static Storm deployed, they have caged the vampire, and they will slay the vampire. A stake through the heart, and now a chase into the fountain. Looking for Fada, Ghost Scepter allows him to retreat, but here comes Armel with the Bash Talon, just chewing up Limp. Nothing to limp back to the fountain with. He is dead, and the game is won. TNC take it to a game three. Yeah, it's the I, TNC, I think the Southeast Asian Dota fans were expecting to show up today. They crushed their group.